hi and uh, welcome back to another video so first of all I wanted to thank you guys for a thousand subscribers which basically happened overnight because um, I posted one of my videos the, the one about neural networks on Reddit and uh, yeah it got a lot of attention which is really nice so thanks now this is uh, gonna be the third installment in the series on IPVS in this video we'll be building a Node.js application that uses the IPVS packages to interact with the network the idea of our app is this. We'll have a running IPFS uh, node to which we'll connect with Node.js in the IPFS packages. We'll also set up a small web page with Express on which we'll be able to post a document with a name. We then submit the document and our backend will add it to IPFS and return a link for us so that we can um, yeah, click that link and go to an IPFS gateway, whether it be a public one or a private one. Now right away it's important to distinguish two methods of using IPFS with Node.js. The first one is by using JS IPFS, which is an IPFS implementation written in JavaScript. Um, the normal client, which we used in previous videos, is the main one and it's written in Go. Now this package, so the JS IPFS package, allows us to create an IPFS peer in Node.js itself. But since it's of the JavaScript implementation, which is new, it isn't ideal yet. So we won't be able to connect to a lot of peers because uh, basically no one uses the JS IPFS um, implementation. So we're going to be using the second library, which is IPFS HTTP client. This lets us connect to a, a running Go IPFS node through its API endpoint so that we can add files and all that stuff um, with JavaScript through our node. All right, let's get into it. Before we start though, um, just know that I'm going to be using ES6 syntax without explaining everything along the way. So if you don't understand something, um, I suggest you look it up before continuing. So I've made a new directory, and since this is a Node.js uh, project, we'll start with npm init. Alright, um, you can skip through all of this. I'm going to make the entry point um, app.js, just because that's what I always do. Alright. Author will be polycode and that's gonna be okay. Alright, next up we're gonna need the following packages. So IPFS oh I'm sorry, npm install IPFS HTTP client. Um, then we're gonna need EJS, which is a templating language for server-side rendering. Then Express for setting up the server. Express file upload for getting files on the server, so basically downloading the files from a post request. And then finally, body parser for parsing the post request. All right, let's download that. All right, so I've opened up my editor and we'll start by creating a new file, app.js, which is our entry point. Okay. Right, we'll start by um, <coughs> importing our, our our packages. So, IPFS client will be um, IPFS HTTP client. Then we're gonna need Express. Oh, equals require Express. All right. Uh, then body parser. We're also going to need file upload. Express file upload. All right, and that's it for now. Now let's connect to um, our IPFS node running on localhost port 5001. We'll call the instance IPFS and we connect to it like this. So this takes in an object, the host is localhost then the port is 5001 and then the standard protocol will be HTTP All right we'll also create our IPVS app um, Express app I'm sorry all right <coughs> now some configuration so since we'll be using um, EJS as a template language We'll set our view, view engine to be EJS. Right. 
Um, then we're gonna use body parser. This is all just standard initialization of those um, packages. Extended is true. Right, and then we also need file upload. Now, um, let's create our two routes. So the first one is gonna be the root route. And this is gonna be rendering a page called home. So rest of the render, oh yeah, home. All right, perfect. And then the next um, one is gonna be, the next route is gonna be a post request to slash upload. Also, request response as a callback function. All right, um, yeah, we're gonna be filling in the body later. Let's first create a function that will actually add the file to IPVS. First, we're gonna need another library for interacting with the files, and that library is file system. Um, it's built in in Node.js, so you don't have to download it. Okay, so uh, let's make our function and we're gonna call it add file and it's gonna be an async function for uh, easier asynchronous programming now all right now the way to um, add something to ipfs is um, with ipfs add so ipfs add and this takes in an object with two keys the first is the path which is what the file is called when added to ipfs and the second is the content which will be a buffer of the file itself so we'll have our function take in two parameters, uh, namely file name and file path. All right, now that now that we have the file path, we can get the buffer of the actual file by using fs.readfilesync on the file path. And we'll be storing that in a variable called file. Okay, so now that we have the file name and the file path, we can uh, fill in the object. So path equals file name and um, content, which is the buffer of the file, is then file. Now, ipvs.add returns a list of the added files, which will be one in our case. So we'll save that into a variable called file added. And since this is this returns a promise, we'll await that promise before continuing. The items in the list consist of a hash, which is a content identifier of that file and the file name. We only need the hash, so let's save that. File hash. Remember that file added is actually a list, so we have to zero index it. And we call hash. And then finally we'll return the file hash. All right, let's now get back to our post request. First, we'll parse the post request. Um, we're gonna need the file, the whole file, which is in request.files.file. Um, then we're gonna need the file name, which we can get from the body, because we'll fill it in in a, a form, file name. And then we'll um, create the file path. And we'll do that in a uh, directory called files. And then let's file name. Okay, so first we're gonna have to create that directory. MKD files. All right, perfect. Um, yeah, the next thing to do is we need to actually download that file onto our server. <coughs> and we can do that with file.move. So this takes in uh, the file path to where it has to be moved. And then the next thing is an error, uh, a callback function with an error. And we'll make that asynchronous because we have to asynchronously program again. Um, all right, so first we'll do some error handling. So very simple error handling. So console.log error failed to download the file 
and re we'll return uh, the status 500. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so now we want to um, call our add file functions uh, function with the, the right parameters, so file name and file path. And this will return a promise. So we're gonna again we're gonna have to await um, this promise, and we'll put that into uh, file. Oh, yeah, close file hash. Alright, so like this, file name and file path. Okay, so now that we've added the file to IPFS and we've gotten our hash, we can delete the file with fs.unlink, which again takes in the file path and the callback function. And we'll just do a very simple error handling. because this isn't that important. All right. Um, now, finally, we want to render our page with the right parameters, which we can pass on like this. So rest.render, and the page we want is upload. We have to create the page, of course, first. Um, and yeah, so the parameters we want to be accessible from that page will be file name and file hash. Okay, great. Okay, now for the boring stuff, we still have to write our EJS pages. For this, we're gonna need a directory called views. So let's make that directory a little quick. Yeah, so the directory views is where um, Express defaults to um, when looking for pages to render. So in this directory, we'll create two pages, uh, which are gonna be home.ejs slash home.ejs and upload.ejs Now EJS stands for Embedded JavaScript and it's basically just HTML in which you can write a JavaScript and access JS variables that were passed on. Um, Alright, so the home page is just going to be an H1 and a form where we can submit our file and our file name. So let's write that real quick. I'm going to use Emmet title will just be um, IPFS demo, then our h1 upload file to IPFS. Next up we're gonna need a form, our action will be to slash upload, method is gonna be post, and then because we um, submit a file we're gonna need an ink type, encryption type, and that's going to be multi-part form data. All right. Um, what is this incrementation? Jesus. All right. Um, first, we'll create the label for the file name. I'm not going to do the for. That's unnecessary. So, file name, and then input. Type equals text. Yes. Um, and the name, we're gonna give it a name so that we can retrieve it later. I mean, we already basically retrieved it in our app, but it still has to have a name. Um, then we'll do just two breaks for a little, of a little bit of styling. And then the label for upload file, input type equals file, and We'll also name that file. And again, two breaks. And then input type submit. And the value will be submit as well. Okay, so in the uploads page, you want a title, and then we want the name of our file and a link to where we can view the file. Um, I'll start by giving this the title IPFS demo, then an h1 with file uploaded, and um, yeah, so now we're gonna display um, the file name, and remember that we passed 
the file name and the file hash as parameters to the render function. Now the way to access, basically the way to uh, write JavaScript in EJS is by using these identifiers. So two plus two, this is gonna be four in JavaScript. Uh, but when you want to display something in HTML, you use the equal sign um, after the first identifier. So we want file name to be, to be displayed. And we'll do that like this. So name is file name. And then next up we want the link. And this is gonna be, yeah, so this is gonna um, give us a link to We'll use the public gateway of IPFS itself, so ipfs.io slash ipfs slash, and then normally what has to come now is the hash, but we don't directly have the hash. So again, we'll use the, the one that we have passed in, like this. So this now completes um, the link. And then we're also gonna display the file hash here. All right, great. Now in the app file, we forgot one thing, which is um, to make our server listen. So we're gonna do app.listen on port 3000 and then a callback function, which is gonna, once it's completed, console.log server is listening on port 3000. All right. Now, the last thing we have to do before we can test this is um, start our AP IPFS daemon because we're gonna have to connect to it. Okay, so here you can see the gateway server is listening. Oh no, no, that's the wrong one. I mean, the API server is listening on um, localhost port 5001. Okay, now we can finally start our server. So we know that the JS. All right, service listening on port 3000. So let's go to localhost. 3000 and great okay so i'm gonna upload a test file which is just uh, a short txt file and i'm gonna call it test file polycode and let's submit okay great so this is the hash of the the file that was added to ipfs now if i click this link i should be redirected to the public gateway and this might take a while since um public gateway is always very crowded so i'm just gonna wait so indeed it took a while but um, eventually it loaded and this was indeed the test file i uploaded so there we go that was our um, ipfs application with node.js uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time